composing consciousness, bringing together on one point, the present, here and now. So the the posture, the the the, ba- the foundations for this that I have always used are the physical body itself, the posture, the breath, and sound of silence. So this just reminding ourselves that. It's the con- continuous reflection on here and now. You know, the experience is now. Everything is is now. Because the ignorance, the avicca, is always uh, the reality of the future or the past. We we plan. We can live now for the future without knowing what we're doing or living in the past of sentiment and memory about things we've done in the past or in guilt and remorse. So it's always this, even though this quite obvious fact here and now, uh, emotionally where it takes a while to get really used to it, to be, to really trusting and to recognize, realize the, the profundity, the, the, the reality of here and now. Because, you know, our thoughts can be quite frivolous in the present or obsessive or cruel or unkind or nonsensical. And the here and now can seem totally kind of banal and of no importance. Because the future promises maybe so much more. So that's why in, in uh, meditation we're bringing attention to the kind of that which isn't extreme in any way, just ordinary, ordinariness of the here and now, the body. Not to be aware of the body as some kind of special, you know, kind of hype it up into something special. But four postures, you know, these are four ordinary postures that any human being has to use moving the body from morning to night sitting, standing, walking, lying down, breathing in and out, nothing fantastic, nothing special. Sound of silence, see that? That's nothing, even though it sounds special, it's very ordinary. And when you when you have never recognized it or noticed it, then it maybe sounds like some attain some kind of attainment something special, but it, it, when you recognize it's ordinary, it's always present. So when we say composing, bringing together, you know, if you stop the kind of wandering, proliferating tendencies of, you know, thinking um, planning your future, remembering the past, or just the the way we we make assumptions. We can be sitting and be caught in a, you know, thinking about our trip to Thailand or some some other place. You know, it's uh, not not here and now, but you know, caught in plans for the future or memories of the past. Or worries and what's going to happen to me in the future. And so worry is always about thinking about the future, isn't it? We don't worry about the past. 
So it's always in the present that we experience reality the way it is, Dhamma. And that's where even the idea of practicing now in order to attain something in the future, this is deluding, isn't it? This is a this is based on on the on believing in time and the sense of self. I am somebody who's ignorant needs to practice in order to become enlightened in the future. So the the self the uh, the self is is built around memory, isn't it? What is the self in the present? You know, when you when you think of yourself as a person, as a personality, it's always through m- m- remembering something. I'm this way. I'm like this. I am this body. I am these memories, these emotions. <clears throat> so the self, uh, the atta or self view, sakyaditi is is always the illusions that we create uh, from remembering. In the present moment, if if you're not remembering who you are, there is awareness, isn't it? If you're not thinking, I am Ajahn Sumato, if I'm not remembering, that's I have to remember that, you know, it's a memory, then the name Ajahn Sumato, I have to remember that, that's my name. But if before I remember anything, then there is this awareness, which isn't, you know, doesn't isn't a memory, isn't isn't a creation of through mem, mem remem, uh, m- through remembering, but recognizing alertness, attentiveness. Sometimes it's quite humorous to really intentionally create yourself. I'm this person. I wonder today what I can find to be offended by. (laughs) What what I can determine is going to upset me or offend me in some way. (laughs) And uh, to. Yeah, uh, because uh, you know, self sakyaditi is always a bit absurd and ridiculous. <clears throat> the way you know, it's a inflated sense of self and Im- self importance and and uh, obsessive concern and fears that generate from creating oneself. But in the, in the composing, bringing together here and now, this this attentiveness is is not is not a memory. There's no self, but there is uh, you know wisdom. There's a, wisdom comes from this this awareness. It's intelligent awareness. It's not a, a, a dull blank. So, you know, in, in order to really develop this, cultivate this, you, you reflect on this is what it is. And this a sense of pausing, listening, paw, and then in this kind of poised attention Thinking is, is memory again. So when you, you try to analyze <clears throat> whether, you know, think about how mindful you are right now and that, then you're back into that level of, of uh, conditioned phenomena. So like analyzing yourself, trying to figure out why you feel like this or who you really are, 
even with Buddhist terminologies, uh, you know, it's all still memory that you're using. Language is memory, isn't it? <clears throat> we forget words, we forget, we lose our memory. We, we, we don't know who we are anymore. <clears throat> and if we've not developed any wisdom, then we, you know, it's terrifying not to, because emotionally we, we feel secure when we, when we have an identity, when we know who we are, where we belong, my position, even if it's uh inferior position there's some security in knowing you're you're a criminal or a drug addict or something like that. <laughs> having some identity you know, isn't it surprise you sometimes that the things that people cling to as their identities you know they're very negative and must be painful but yet it is some kind of identity whether you think you're the best person in the whole world or the absolute worst there is a sense of you know being you know what you are where awareness you know isn't isn't a memory so so the the emotional reaction to it can be you know you know can be rather frightening because we don't know that 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 security of knowing what i am is is not there <clears throat> and that's where the mindfulness to sustain that awareness so that the emotional reactions are not we're not just being caught in that in those panics in those fears those reactions because not being anybody is is peaceful. No self is is peaceful. As long as there's a self, you know, you create out of ignorance. There's always, you've always got to defend it in some way, justify it. <clears throat> it gets complicated, and and you become obsessed with yourself and your views and your opinions and feelings and what not and it, it's just uh, in, you know just a continuous con continuous complexity of misery being somebody being a bhikkhu you know I'm, I am a bhikkhu that identity and if, if I'm if that's done out of ignorance I'm attached to that identity of being a Theravada and Bhikkhu, then in it I create all kinds of complexities around it. So in with awareness we begin, we begin to, there's no more need to create ourselves or to find out what we are. I've known people, you know, who've who really seem to lack any real sense of self, but are always trying to find out who they are, you know, endless need to analyze or go have therapies or, you know, figure out why I'm like this, who I am, my true nature. And on the level of, of thought and analysis, wanting, you know, a, a, a clarity of I am this, Identity with, with the body, with the gender. This creates endless problems nowadays, isn't it? The polarization, the resentments of male, female, sense of unfairness, injustice done, um, resentments from the past, the, you know, the, the defensiveness, having to defend being male or being female, having to justify or say one is better than the other, and endless arguments around gender, sexuality. And so 
so so obsessed with their sexuality. So all these different like heterosexuality, homosexuality, bisexuality, and there must be so many permutations on these three, you know, identity with with sexuality. Is uh, it can be the whole purpose of one's life to justify, defend, and be firmly attached to uh, sexual identity. Or nationality, or class, or ideas of, you know, idealism, of classlessness, of uh, everybody's equal. We can be attached to these uh, high ideals. Of, you know, everybody is equal. There shouldn't be any class structure. No upper class, upper middle class, middle class, no lower middle class, no working class. <laughs> We're all equal. And that's, a, that's an ideal, isn't it? Uh, men and women are exactly the same there's no different that's another ideal so ideals you can you know you can you can these are you know taking something to an extreme a positive extreme <clears throat> and that takes thought that's memory again isn't it the memory of you know the idealism that especially in youth that you know I certainly was very idealistic when I was young Strong identities like uh, nationality, I mean, English or Welsh, Irish, Scott. These are these are memories, aren't they? You 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 have to remember that you're you're English. <clears throat> and then, then being Jewish, or you know these these uh, these are these are memories also. Being Jewish is a very strong conditioning for people. That, you know they're brought up to see themselves as in that with that word. You know there's so much emotion, so much history. You know. So much drama connected to being Jewish, and so I'm, you know, I was brought up in the United States with the ethnic identity of kind of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. These are these are the kind of privileged in America. You know, the founding fathers of the United States and the the privilege of your white race. Anglo-Saxon, meaning you, you know, even being French or German or something is not quite, you know, Anglo-Saxon means English, really, or and that identity, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Catholics are a bit, you know, that's a bit alien, suspect then, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant wasp. But that's not a very, you know, that's a comical identity, you know. It was never one like being Jewish where, you know, it's a really kind of powerful sense of history and importance and speciality where being a wasp is, is more like a joke, at least to me. <laughs> it's nothing you can kind of, you, uh, 
you regard, you die for, or give your life for in any way. <laughs> so my ethnic identities, you know, don't mean much to me. You know, they're superficial and even comical in a way. <clears throat> Racial identity. In, in the, when I lived in the United States, you know, me, black Americans, you, you don't, when you're a wasp, you don't know what it's like. You don't have a clue of what it's like to be brought up with a sense of being inferior racially. And of course, in the American system, it's uh, all races are equal, but that's that's the ideal for the United States. That's not the way it is. <laughs> so the idea that all races are equal, but, but the reality of especially when I was young, was that blacks were definitely second-class, even third-class citizens. And I didn't, you know, was, you know didn't recognize because of what that would be like. I don't understand that. And, you know, I can understand it intellectually, but on a emotional level of feeling racially inferior. I've never felt that. That's never been a part of the identity, the self-view. <clears throat> but if you're a minority, uh, you know, like blacks in the, in the America, where the, the wasp is held up as the, as the best, then, then the, the sense of inferiority arises just around the color of the skin and the, and the race identity. Just noticing, you know, how the race identity, I, I don't know what it, I, I, I don't, I've never felt racially inferior. So I don't, you know, don't have that as a problem, but my sense of inferiority is, uh, is personal. It's always around me as a person. The, the racial problem was never, because the, in terms of Acculturation, isn't it? The, the, that sense, that, that memory of race, of waspness is, has never, you know, even though I can, I can make fun of it and despise it, and on the conditioning level, emotionally, it's never made me feel inferior. But the, uh, per, it's never made me personally feel inferior. But on a personal level, I've, certainly suffer from inferiority, feelings of inferiority. And you're brought up in a competitive, you know, America is a very competitive society. You know, you're brought up to compete, be winners. The idea is to be a winner. Success and winning are the, are the sumum bonum of human experience. To be a failure is uh, is despicable means you're not worth anything so the whole system is to compete and try to prove yourself by being a winner <clears throat> so that definitely makes one brings up the sense of inferiority because you can't you know how many you know can everybody be a winner on a personal level <laughs> You know, and so some are better than others at certain things, at sports or at studies, at school or at social skills. And there's always somebody who's, who's, you know, the, the gradation of, uh, can vary from being the, the best, the most skillful to the most unskillful. So there's, level of the self view of, you know well i have to remember that that uh what you know that certain things make me feel inferior certain things that happen you know and people that are much better than i am at doing certain things or saying certain things make me personally feel inferior or i can feel superior i i'm much better at that than you are they're not they don't they aren't so good, but I'm much better than it. So it's, it's this sense of self that we remember through, you know, through the conditioning 
of identity. I'm <clears throat> I'm a much more skillful meditation practitioner than that one is. Or so reflecting on on atta the self view sakayaditi is uh, to to become a person you have to remember and and so that ability to observe to witness to this you know is is the sati sampatanya this is the path of liberation in itself so the buddha is actually saying you don't have to find out who you are you just have to recognize what you're not so in the vipassana meditation is it says you know recognizing realizing I'm, the, I'm not the body the body's not self the Feelings are not self, the perceptions are not self, the uh, mental formations are not self, vijnana is not self. And it's not a, it's not another memory, you know, you're not trying to just create a, a non-self self. <clears throat> That's what you're doing if you're just attaching to the eye, to the concept of no self and trying to convince yourself that there's no self, then it's, you're creating a self that's not a self. Which is absurd also, isn't it? Now that's not, obviously not what the Buddha meant, just to believe in, in anatta as some kind of, and then just <clears throat> attach the idea, I have no self. But they do investigate what self really is. Let's look at what we do in our society, just like, you know, the way people attach to labels like schizophrenia or pedophilia or, I mean, these are really, you know, really uh, negative ways of looking, you know, of holding yourself. I'm a schizophrenic or I'm a, you know, identity with, with some kind of, you know, you're given an identity labeled and and then one if you have no sati banya operating in your life then you tend to to uh, conform to that identity limits you doesn't it to be the, these, these kind of uh, psychiatric labels I don't you know I think they're a bit I think they're quite dangerous because it's so easy to think, you know, the authorities say I'm a schizophrenic. And then to, uh, you know, kind of, once you've decided that that's what you are, then you tend to become like that. According to memory, I am a schizophrenic. Or the, the, the uh, around pedophilia now, this is, you know, this is, big issue now and this this labeling people as pedophiles and then and then the, it that tends to reinforce the problem and then they're vilified and detested in the society <clears throat> Islamic terrorists <laughs> must be very terrible uh, now to to look like a um, um, Islamic terrorist. You know, I worry about Lee sometimes.
He looked like the Taliban or something. And some people are so ignorant, they might think that we're Islamic terrorists. <laughs> Just because we, we, we're not, we don't, you know, this is not particularly uh, a style of apparel that we can say is, is really, you know, really European Christian English <laughs> or right wing American. <clears throat> that is a bit odd, isn't it? Sometime I remember one time at Chitters years ago and they, they thought we were Arabs. <laughs> the first <laughs> uh, some of the local people thought we were Arabs. Another man uh, thought we were Hans. I never figured that one out. We were Hans. <clears throat> so, you, you know, people are not particularly intelligent. They just have these words. You know, they're, they're kind of negative. You know, being Han, I suppose, is like being some kind of terrorist or barbarian. And uh, And being an Arab means that you wear robe like or you know loose robe like apparel I imagine <clears throat> so and these are this is still memory isn't it some people are quite ignorant even on the worldly level and so they they just operate from <laughs> from that limited kind of <laughs> memories that they do have <clears throat> but uh Ignorance, avicca, is uh, is the problem, is the source. It's just uh, this not understanding. So it's not education so much is is needed now as awareness, awakening, yoni uh, somanasikara, getting to the root, you know, investigating reality, finding out, you know, you know. Getting beyond just the conditioning, just the habit patterns, the identities, the the limitation of the sankharas. So in, in, you know, just like exploring non-self, you know, this is like recognize the the power of this sati sampajanya awareness here and now, attentiveness. Before you know, we, we, and and then being able to see how you create yourself in the in this, you know, like I have to practice. Uh, I have to do this or get rid of these defilements or, you know, the whole the sense of yourself uh, as a person. It's not to, you know, to, that it's, it's wrong, but the attachment to that out of ignorance is the cause of suffering. So this is where to trust this awareness and to, to see the self, whatever way you create yourself, 
to know that that is not what you are. You know, whatever you think and and uh, remember and believe you are or fear you might be or whatever in, in this way, it, that's not what you are. It is, it is what it is, though. It's the arising, ceasing, sanya, sankara. Then, in the as you trust in the awareness more, then that that is the refuge. That is a a real trustworthy refuge. Or any position you take as a person is not very trustworthy, I guarantee it. You know, it's just, uh, it's because it is false and it's ephemeral and it's not the way things really are. So, so any attempt to kind of hold on control and, and create a, an illusory realm around yourself that, uh, that makes you feel safe will end up in some form of disaster crisis, disappointment. We're all going to be challenged by life because that's the way it is. There's no way you can can hold uh, and create illusions <coughs> and then expect them to support you through your lifetime. We have, you know, we get disillusioned as we get older and life since we're idealistic when we're young, then we tend to become cynical when we get older. <clears throat> so in this, then I, you know, I, this is very clear to me. You know, this through just exploring, you know, that's rupang ani chang vedana ani cha that reflection we we have in the morning chanting it's not just you know saying the words but af- after you know so many years of chanting this and, and reflection on on anatta and on the five khandas you know it's so clear so obvious it's it's not just re- true kind of remember that the five khandas are not self and that that, that doesn't transform any us very much. We're still going to suffer even when we believe that. It's in in uh, investigating and seeing, proving. <coughs> so in awareness, you know, this this awareness, there's no self. And to 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 become a self, I have to start thinking. I have to remember I am Ajahn Sumato. Then I become a, a self. If I don't think I'm Ajahn Sumato or anything, if it's just pure awareness, and then it there's no there's no need to to be anything. You know, there's nothing to prove, nothing to become. Nothing to get rid of. The perfection lies in that point of awareness. Liberation is in that point of awareness. Nibbana is in that point of awareness. Deathlessness is that point of awareness. (coughs) So... The, the problems resolve themselves. You know, the condition uh, problems that, of the five khandhas that we we identify with and, and then, then our life becomes an endless complexity and neuroses, fears and endless fears and and desires that, that enslave us and bind us to suffering.
No, I didn't. But teacher Samupada, you know, Avicha, Banjaya Sankara, this is ignorance, not knowing this, really, not being aware. And operating from the sense of self, I am Ajahn Sumedho. Operating from that, I am Ajahn Sumedho, then that, uh, then that um, affects my conscious ex- ex- reality, isn't it? I am this, this, this name, this identity. I am a Buddhist monk. I am this and that. And my duty, my position, my history, my biography, what I've done, what I should have done, what I shouldn't have done. I've got a whole, you know, 70 years of remembering, of memories, good, bad, indifferent ones. That, that sets that into motion. Somebody gave me a book the other day. Somebody wrote a book on, uh, on the freeing, it's called Freeing the Mind, something. And, uh, he's a psychologist in the United States. And he, he's been influenced by my, me. And I don't know this man, but he's in the, acknowledgments of people that have helped him write this book. Now, I do not know this man, so he must have read or internet or something like this. But he used my layman's name. So in the names of acknowledgments, suddenly I see my name, Robert Jackman. And then it was very strange because I haven't identified with that name for years. And that was my name, you know, Christian name, one my mother and father gave me. But the name Ajahn Sumedho is much more, you know, that's what Robert Jackman seems a bit strange to me now, <coughs> to, to use the name. Because I'm so used to, to thinking, when they say, what's your name, what is, who are you, to the... To the the memory of Ajahn Sumedho comes up, not Robert Jackman. I said, what was your name before you were a bhikkhu? And then I said, Robert Jackman, I can remember that too. But the name I use, you know, is an adopted name, one given to me by the Upachaya. So, but yet, that's the one, that's the one that I remember and use. So, I mean, that's the, you know, that's, that's the conditioning of the mind, having ordained as a monk and then used that name all these years. <clears throat> but the awareness of that, then that this is a, this is a matter of conditioning, you know, of, of uh, which means that you know, once you start, once I start using the name Ajahn Sumato, then uh, I no longer used Robert Jackman, so. So that was, uh, you know, so the, the identity shifted to Ajahn Sumato. And then I go back to the United States and people will call me Bob. And I must say, I never liked that name, even when I was a lay person. It's such a funny sound, isn't it? Bob. Uh, that's you're stuck with a comical sound. <clears throat> that's my name. <clears throat> Robert is a little more, you know, dignified. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my sister a letter. I uh, told her about getting this title. Uh, for, you know, Raja Sumaita Charya Pisan Paranagit Mahakani Sorn Bhavan Sankaram Kama Vesi. I wrote it out for her. And I said, I've come a long way since I was just Bob.
But these are all memories, isn't it? And the, um, you know, to to even the ident- gender identity, isn't it? You have to. Remember, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a male. Because I'm identified with the with the with the body. <clears throat> So this is a memory, you know, because you, the awareness has no gender to it. it. You know, it's 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 non-dualistic. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have quality, uh, quantity. So in in awareness, then the, the gender thing is is merely you know convention. It's not. You know, it's not, it's not saying there's no such thing as gender, some kind of annihilation of gender, but putting it in a context of what it is, seeing things as they are, you know, so that the conventional realities are respected, you know, the, the forms and conventions and, and that of the, uh, of the conditioned realm. Uh, are certainly, and it's not Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism isn't an annihilation, it isn't to destroy the world in the sankharas, but to no longer be deluded by them, to be free, liberated from that limitation, because whatever you attach to, you become limited by your attachment. This reflects what you know the limitations you have, uh, the sense of yourself, and you know how you know your self worth. You know, all these kind of, these kind of problems that people have now, a lack of self-worth and the self-criticism, comparing yourself, uh, feeling, you know, remembering, uh, the injustices of the past and feeling resentful that you were not respected or, or loved the way that you should have been according to an ideal or we can endlessly kind of Cry about ourselves and feel sorry for ourselves on that, through just believing in and limiting ourselves to these created identities, to these memories. So then, the the liberation from self isn't isn't a denial, isn't a a a, a destruction, but putting self in the context of what it really is. Conventional, isn't it? Ajahn Sumedho is a convention. It's not a real person. It's a convention that, you know, it has its appropriateness and usefulness according to time and place. Being a bhikkhu is a convention, has its usefulness in time and place. Being a Buddhist, being uh, an Ajahn, being uh, whatever, being a man, being a woman, these are being British or American or Japanese, these are conventions that, you know, are, are appropriate to certain situations, but they're not self. They are conditioned phenomena. And if we attach to these, then we become like them. I become Ajahn Sumedho, I'm limited to this name, then, then that brings up the sense of myself and memories and my past and, and my position and, and, uh, all the rest, the whole scenario, the whole, the whole scenario of Ajahn Sumedho arises if I attach to that identity. Or Bob. You know, I can remember the word, they say, bomb, and then I remember, and that brings up certain memories, <coughs> certain emotional reactions. <coughs> so, so uh, this is just how it is, you know, the words, you know, say, you know, Amer- Americans now, you know, being American is not very... Uh, it's not so comfortable anymore. And people hate America more. <laughs> so, 
and probably justifiably in so many ways <laughs> that that uh, you know it, it brings up you know where being American was something you're kind of proud of. Now a bit, you know, it's, you have to be a bit defensive or think, well, you know, I don't really agree with what's going on now and get into, you know, kind of telling everybody you're not, you're not a really, you know, neoconservative type American. Uh, you are a... <laughs> certain other type of American and all that is proliferation isn't it just by by limiting oneself to that concept and I've seen so a lot because you know I'm, I've been living in Britain longer than I have in America I'm a British citizen also so I'm but the thought doesn't really come to me that I'm British You know the memory, even though I, you know, I, I can say that, but yet the uh, it doesn't it doesn't resonate. You know, on a conventional level, it does, but you know, legally, I am British and American, I'm both. But but then, on the level of memory, uh, you know, from the past, the American memories are very strong. The identity with that. That's the initial, that was the initial, you know, scenario of, from childhood. But that's the way it is, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's noticing that which is aware is not limited into those, that, that, those kind of perceptions. You know, so some people want to know, what am I I really, you know, because I feel a a lot of uh, identity with Thailand. Well, I can't say I'm Thai. (laughs) So, uh, you know, these, these, uh, these three places have been very profound in my, you know, as memories, you know, where I was born, where in uh, Thailand, where uh, the transformation took place, and where and here in England, where I've been living for for nearly thirty years. So, this is uh, you know the these are these these identities, these national identities have you know bring up feelings, but on the sense of a self, you know that. The, the Sakya Diti, the, the kind of, the, you know, that is, that is conditioned from, from, you know, babyhood, you know, when you, I remember when my sister, she was, uh, two and a half years old and she started school, she'd come back and she'd tell me, you know, we lived in Seattle, Washington, and she'd say, we live in America and we live in Washington State in Seattle. And I was too young to understand all that. I used to just get so confused, you know, because she was learning to discriminate, you know. The, and but to, to you know, at a certain age, you don't you don't have that perspective. So, what are American, Washington, Seattle? What is, what does that mean? You know, it doesn't mean anything. But then, eventually, you know, you're you're acculturated to that, uh, to those. You know, you're, you're you're an American, and you live in Washington State, and you live, and your home is in the city of Seattle. Then it's it's kind of makes sense then, you know, and that you've con- you you've been culturally conditioned properly. Your your position in the society has been set. You know who you are, where you were born, your nationality. But it is all memory still, isn't it? You know, these are, these are cultural conditioning that, that you get, you acquire after birth. Your identity with the place, you know, when, you know, when, if you're from 
Washington, you know, the state, and then people would ask me to say, you know, you could travel of, and in say in Thailand or other places, where you're from, from Washington, they'd say, oh, Washington D.C. And I say, no, Washington State, and then they look bewildered. Where's that? I say, that's on the opposite side of the country. Washington, D.C. is on the East Coast, stupid, and Washington State's on the West. <laughs> and most people, and I've never heard of Washington State, but everybody's heard of Washington, D.C. So you end up in this, in this, this seems to be the story of my life. Because now my sister has moved to Vancouver, Washington. And so then you say, I'm going to visit her in June. Say, Where are you going to Vancouver? Oh, well, Vancouver, B.C. No. <laughs> Vancouver, Washington. There's two Vancouvers. <laughs> Why can't I have some simple life, you know, where <laughs> you don't have to keep, keep explaining it all? Now, when the, there's awareness, then there's no avicca. So, so in the uh, niroda of Paticca Samuppada, you know, then when there's no avicca, then there's no suffering. You're not creating suffering about what arises and ceases. In other words. One still experiences pain and and all that the, the, because of the nature of this realm. But one, you know, with with vicha, with right understanding, then there is no. We don't create suffering. So this is the Buddha is pointing to the dukkha that we create out of ignorance. It's not a. It's not. In not a, a, an annihilation of the world, because the world is created, you know, and it and the the, the realm of that we're living in the sense realm, the the four elements, the earth, fire, water, and air, all this, the conscious experience within these sensitive forms is like this. This awareness then uh, puts us in the relationship to the conditioned realm rather than identity with it and limited by it, of, of uh, seeing it for, for what it is, knowing it, recognizing it. And, and the conditions, you know, are, you know, this realm we live in, the sense realm is, has all these qualities from the beautiful to the ugly, <clears throat> you know, the, the gamut, the range of good and evil and right and wrong and so forth and the best and the worst so this this uh, this is just the this this realm this dualistic realm this sense realm is uh, to be seen and known through wisdom not identified with not uh, aligned with and grasped out of ignorance so in the in the naroda you know, it's translated as cessation, isn't it? It's usually like something ceases, which tends to sound in English uh, like annihilation. But it really means it doesn't arise with the no ignorance, with, with, when there's no ignorance, then there's no suffering. Asesa viraka nirodo sankara nirodo sankara nirodha. You know, so that this, this not arising, not, not creating problems in other words. With, with awareness, with satipanya, then 
we can adapt and and uh, move and respond to the experience of life that we're having without creating suffering. <clears throat> so uh, we're not with with the bicha with 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 that problem resolved. Then there is this all this this suffering that we create out of ignorance ceases, but we still experience the the uh, the kama vibhaka kama vipaka of the of being born and the uh, conditioned realm that we're living in. You know, so that this is seen through vicha, through understanding and non-attachment, then we don't create suffering around it. It is what it is, arises, ceases, not self. 